The prospects for the alternative cyber currency known as Bitcoin have brightened with some serious financial players preparing to open it to investment. The Winklevoss twins, best known for suing Facebook's founder Mark Zuckerberg over claims he stole their social network idea, are planning to float a Bitcoin trust. RT's Katie Fieldbeam has the details. Bitcoin, the peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system and an alternative to traditional currencies, has had its fair share of controversy since its introduction four years ago. And it's now being backed by the infamous Facebook suing twins, Tyler and Cameron Winklevoss. Now, if the proposal for a Bitcoin trust fund is given the go-ahead by the Securities and Exchange Commission, the twins will contribute their own $10 million worth of Bitcoins into the trust in exchange for shares in the virtual currency. Now, Bitcoin was created in 2009 by an anonymous web developer and can be exchanged for other currencies and used to pay for goods and services. But it doesn't exist in, in physical form. Now, the Bitcoin is seen by its users as an alternative to traditional currencies, especially during the Eurozone sovereign debt crisis as more people began distrusting central banks. But the virtual coin has been linked to money laundering and accusations of drug smuggling, which has made the value of the Bitcoin extremely volatile since the start of the year, rising from $13 in January to a peak of $266 in April, and right now it sits at around $90. Now, their release is also tightly controlled, mimicking essential banking systems control over the minting of money, which means there can only ever be 21 million created, and right now there's around 11 million in circulation. Now, this factor has led to some to speculate that their value may rise further. Now, the Facebook feud between the Winklevoss twins and Mark Zuckerberg was portrayed in the 2010 movie The Social Network and eventually resulted in a $65 million settlement. So I wonder if they'll be updating their Facebook status there with their Bitcoin new venture. I think not. Now, the new multi-million US dollar cash injection looks set to make placing money into Bitcoin even easier, opening up to more mainstream investors, possibly. But as RT's Maria Portnaya found out in New York, the rebel currency still has a strong grasp over those drawn to its anti-establishment charm. It's happy hour in midtown Manhattan. Dozens of bars are filled with after-work crowds. But here, at Ever... is where you'll find the Big Apple's expanding community of Bitcoin investors. Rocks, I guess. It's the first New York City establishment to accept the digital currency, a monetary system free from government and bank control, as well as credit card processing fees. I'd rather everyone pay with Bitcoin than I would with a credit card. 23-year-old Charlie Schrem is co-owner of Ever and founder of BitInstant, one of the first Bitcoin payment processing companies. When I first came into the Bitcoin space, um, I was the only person in New York City who had even heard of Bitcoin. I was left out of every VC firm in the city. Mm -hmm. um, and now, fast forward to two years, there are so many startups, there are startup meetups. We're all friends with each other. There's kind of like a culture. Good to see you, my friend. Good How are you? Too. I'm good. How you doing? A culture of young, financially savvy New Yorkers determined to build an unregulated financial system. I'll buy a Bitcoin. All right, hold on. I'm going to bid. Josh Rossi hosts a weekly Bitcoin meeting in Union Square, where people can buy and sell the digital coins, a gathering that attracts even hedge fund and high-frequency traders. You can finally opt out of uh, a system that you don't agree with. Like, Bernanke can keep printing as much money as he wants. Bitcoin users aren't affected. We are holding Bitcoins. It only makes our Bitcoins worth more dollars. It's a natural hedge against inflation. In a city that serves as the global headquarters for most of the world's largest banks, the Bitcoin economy is slowly being embraced by respectable businesses. Domino's Pizza, the Howard Johnson Hotel chain, and a New York-based limo service now accept the digital currency. Fair to say that New Yorkers are able to eat, sleep, and commute without spending a dollar. Online, popular sites like Reddit and OkCupid accept Bitcoin. Cars, furniture, and tech gadgets have been put up for sale on the trading website Craigslist, with dollars or digital coins equally accepted.
And for the anti-PRISM privacy defenders, the Big B will soon have purchase power with these burner phones, which feature disposable numbers. Many economists remain skeptical of the long-term stability of a currency that lacks backing from a single government, but not a problem for Bitcoin believers. If they were pleased with the monetary system, if they felt it was fair, then they wouldn't be looking for it an option like Bitcoin. So you see already the loss of confidence, the loss of commitment. It's a sign of where the society is going. The U.S. government, though, isn't too happy with Bitcoin's popularity. It recently shut down a virtual exchange system for the currency, claiming it was a money laundering platform. I think we've had 100 years now of what the U.S. government can do when it gets to manipulate a currency. And a lot of people are kind of tired of that. And they want to ex experiment in a space where you can't manipulate a currency. Just what would that even mean for money? Um, and I think that's why a lot of people are really interested in the space. Growing enthusiasm for an invisible currency presented to rival the printed greenback. Marina Portnaya, RT, New York.